right, what's going on, Los Angeles? What's up, Ramley? Finally, welcome back to another edition of the Rams Skinny here on the LAFB Network. LAFBnetwork.com, your destination for Los Angeles sports. Thank you all for making us a part of your day. Sorry for the delay, a little, uh, um, I guess, lag or uh, break between shows. We haven't even got to talk about that amazing Niners win, which we'll briefly go over today before getting to our Bears preview. Uh, my man, Skinny T, was dealing with some family stuff. We'll leave it at that, but had to obviously family first as always. So taking care of that. Um, and so we you know, had a little break from this, but happy to be back. Skinny, happy you are back. Repping an A's hat after they finished their season, their last game at the Yoko Coliseum. What's up, man? How you doing? I'm glad you recognize that. I'm doing all right, man. Uh, family issues crop up, and uh, I'm just so bummed that I wasn't able to go live with you after that amazing comeback. We'll talk about it a little bit. I'm sure you guys aren't tired about uh, hearing about uh, that. But uh, yeah, A's are gone. I moved to the Bay Area in 2008 and lived there for 10 years. And one of my favorite activities was going to a dirt cheap uh, A's game because I always had plenty of seats available. And uh, yeah, so I, I had to, I had to snag this off culture Kings. It's got the, uh, the logo for the, uh, the battle of the Bay world series there on the side. One of the first world series I watched all games of every inning of that, including the game where there was an earthquake that uh, disrupted the whole thing. So uh, we're going to miss you A's here in California. Uh, hopefully uh, Las Vegas treats you right. Yeah, I know. Crazy. Always these, all these team moves are always interesting. Obviously LA move, the Rams moved and now we're back. Um, yeah, it's crazy what it does to a fan base. And anyway, that's a whole nother podcast. So, um, show is always brought to you by your friends at bet online, head to bet online.ag. All the best game lines are there. Rams are currently three point dogs. I don't know if you call them dogs since they're on the road, but they're they're uh, the bears are favored by three points, uh, over on bet online. You can get all that action at betonline.ag, telling the guys at the Rams skinny sent you money line plus 134. I like that a lot for the Rams. We'll get into it here in a bit, but betonline.ag, um, where the game starts. So let's get first, just because we haven't been able to really discuss, and we won't take for those listening. I know it's already by the time you're listening to this Friday or Saturday, so we won't spend a ton of time on it because this is a, a great matchup with the Bears. We want to make sure to get all into for the preview, but. Come from behind, 27-24 victory. No one gave him a shot, including us, if we're being honest. We'll call it out. Like uh, we, we said some things they could do to stay in this game, but both of us really thought that the Niners, even with their injuries, would have more of their way just because of what the Rams' run defenses look like, um, what the Rams' offense hasn't been able to do um, based on some of the injuries that they've occurred. And, you know, I'll toss it to you, but my, my biggest takeaway is this team just battles. And people can argue all night if they really are a really good team, if they're a top team, if they're a playoff contender, whatever. But at the end of the day, end of the day this is a well-coached team that has still some pillars in it that, that battles till the very end. And obviously Matthew Stafford is the biggest warrior of them all and what he's able to carry this team to do. And it will go as far as he carries them. Um, but they stayed together. They fell behind uh, early and it started to look like it was going to get out of hand battled back, kept going. So, I mean, we'll get into it a tiny bit, but that was just my biggest takeaway, just how much this team battles, how much heart they have and how much they play for each other. What were, what were your initial thoughts after this big win? You know, it's it's a great point that you made when we had our our, our good buddy Alfred Rowe on, Coach Rowe. He was asking us, who are the players that are going to run through the wall for Sean McVay? And a lot of them did in this game, um, yeah. especially on the defensive side. They really kept them in the, in the game. Um, you know, they, they have an incredible track record of taking away a team's best option. Now that didn't happen against uh, the Cardinals, but against uh, both the lions and the 49ers, they took out Amon Ross St. Brown. And in this game, they really shut down Brandon Ayuk, who was their only starter that was on the field as far as a, uh, as far as a, a passing weapon yeah. or pass catching weapon. So made, made sure that happened, got after Brock Purdy uh, a lot. And then Stafford just did, did his thing. And uh, you know, you and I were talking to, uh, off air about how you know Les Snead and Sean McVay were still the most influential podcast out there for the Rams. Yeah, we were telling them run the ball. And Kyron Williams got to work, twenty four carries. Um, yep, and and really you know you know two touchdowns as well. Uh, uh, you know one down down towards the end of the game, a, a really clutch situation. Beautiful play call, by the way. Yeah, um, but you know what's interesting about this game in particular is um, in that vein anyway is it really forced their hand. 
you know, um, being down uh, both Puka Nakua and Cooper Cup. They, they had to rely on that running game. And they also dug deep and found some uh, 12 personnel plays. Yeah. So in this game, they ran 24 12 personnel plays. Last year, all year, all of 2023, 59 12 personnel plays. Every, everybody knows 11 personnel, 11 and a half personnel. These were two tight ends. And they only had two tight ends on the roster. <laughs> so I think, um, you know, the, the Tiger changed his stripes. Um, that's what we wanted to see. Really, really uh, aggressive on fourth down as well towards the, the end there. And my guy, Xavier Smith. I've been telling you guys about Xavier Smith yeah. since he was a last year. Since last year. And I, I wanted him on the team. He made the practice squad. Um, and then he, he got elevated this week. Again, he's back down to the practice squad. I don't know how you could have that. The, the, the best special teams play uh, in a couple of years for the, the Rams, and they send him back down to the P squad. Um, but, yeah, a lot, a lot of great things. And, you know, this is the rare instance where a win is also a, uh, a an emotional win. A, uh, a uh, You know, it, it raises the morale of the team as well. They needed this so badly. Yeah. Um, I think – I think they put out a lot of they put out of a lot of emotion and 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 how they follow that up is going to be really interesting to see. I talked a lot. I took all the good points. <laughs> you got anything else? No, that was great. Um, yeah, I, I think you know they ran the ball a total of twenty six times, twenty four for Kyron, two for Ronnie Rivers. Still no Blake Corum. I mean, we'll probably maybe talk about him with his Bears preview. Um, all indications are they love him. He's doing the right things, but still can't get on the field. Whatever reason it is, whether it's, as we've said, maybe it's just his, his pass protection and, and reads aren't quite there yet where they feel comfortable. Um, it, it hasn't hurt. It didn't necessarily hurt them last game. Cause Kyron did have such a great game. You mentioned the two rushing touchdown also receiving touchdown. My fantasy team. Thanks you for the three total touchdowns, Kyron Williams, but just knowing his history with the Rams, you know, that many touches this early in the season, does worry me a bit for his longevity down the stretch. And that's why they drafted Blake Corum to take some of that off him. They get the same skill set, the same type of player. They can do the same things, but they don't have to put all the wear and tear on Kyron. So no doubt Kyron's fantastic. You don't want to take the ball out of his hands, but if taking the ball out of his hands five times a game means he's here for all 18 weeks, that is well worth it. Then not taking out his hand and all of a sudden he's injured by week nine or something. Not saying, you know, let's knock on wood. We don't want that happening, but that would be my one critique of this game. Um, or I guess I have one more critique too, or a positive, but a critique. So I think a lot of the young players are looking really good. I think that's the, the exciting part. Like even early on when it was 14, nothing. And the defense was basically the Niners were doing whatever they wanted on offense. Some of that, maybe people could argue were thanks to some help from the refs, but that's a whole other story. Um, but overall they were basically doing whatever they wanted. I thought Jared verse, I thought Byron young, um, Braden Fisk, a lot of these young guys look really good already. Now, again, if we're over critiquing verse has had some tackling issues four missed tackles in this game, yeah. um, which is, which is a lot by one player, especially on the line. And I know some of that can be attributed to like, you know, trying to sack a quarterback and not wrapping up or whatever, but so that that's one critique, one improvement we'd like to see. Cause verse, I think has played really well. He's in rarefied air already getting talks about rookie of the year, defensive rookie of the year. But can't have four four missed tackles in a, in a game, and I don't know what he is on the, for the season. But that would be the one kind of improvement critique on that. And then, um, and then, last thing I'll say, looks like we have a franchise kicker yet again, Joshua Cardi. <laughs> yeah. Cardi at SoFi with the game winner, coming off a what was it a hammy or a groin he was dealing with all groin, week, yeah. groin yeah. all week, which is pretty important when you're a kicker. And he he muscled up, bit down on that lower lip. And made all his kicks, did his job. What a, what all we ask for kickers is just do your job. And he's done his job swimmingly so far. So all indications are the Rams have a franchise kicker. I'm already proclaiming him that. I love it. Weeks. Yeah, no. I, I was watching Brandon Aubrey last night and I was like, that oh. guy's good yeah. <laughs> from 60 yards. Uh, but uh, I gotta say, real I mean, quick, was- for those Niner fans out there that probably are not listening to this, why would they be? But Jake Moody taking in the third round they drafted him aubrey was the same draft class but undrafted so there you go it's a shame <laughs> yeah <laughs> real, real big shame for we, them we did a remember we did a big deep dive like how many kickers in the league are actually either undrafted or like sixth or seventh round and it's like 80 percent. like there's really no point in in drafting a kicker early like and they they find them in like uh, bethune tatum or whatever the college <laughs> yeah. i don't remember what it was it's, that's not it but <laughs> um no, yeah just just incredible talking. 
I want to uh, I want to uh, bring up something interesting about Jared Verse. The first two games exclusively on the left side or on the right side, going up against the the left tackle of the of the teams, switched him over to the other side and had a decent game. Uh, they moved him away from Trent Williams, obviously. Um, but uh, yeah, when you're playing with that kind of motor that he does, you over pursue on a quarterback and you end up on your belly watching watching their feet scamper away from you. And we saw a lot of that in, in, against. Uh, Kyler and a lot of that against Brock Purdy uh, heading up against the bears too. It's not going to get any easier. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So this is, I didn't realize Brandon Aubrey is 29 years old. So he went to Notre Dame actually for college and then soccer played soccer. Yeah. For Toronto FC, Bethlehem steel FC. And then he played for the Birmingham stallions as a kicker in the UFL. And then now he's oh. with the Cowboys. Right, right, right. Why? Great life, man. Yeah, <laughs> good for him. For him. Um, but anyway, any last thoughts or should we move on to this this Bears matchup? Let's move forward. All right, so this is a game. It's it's a bummer it snuck up so fast because this was a game we wanted to go to. Like, this would have been so fun going to Chicago for the weekend, out at Soldier Field. Um, obviously, we cover Yes C here, so getting to see Caleb Williams in person um out there so unfortunately it's just so early in the season got so much going on wasn't able to make it happen but this should be a really really good football game the bears i think have looked really bad at times but they've also looked pretty good at times um we know they have a good defense excuse me we know they have a lot of talent on offense they have not put it all together keenan allen's been banged up he as of right now this recording is still questionable for this game um roma dunze is good to go so they do have him back with dj moore um, so still plenty of weapons there, but, but yeah, you're just first, first initial thoughts of your game. Like what are you either most looking forward to, or, or what, what's your kind of outlook of this game? Big picture. Yeah. I mean, styles make fights and th- these Ooh. two stylistically are just so compelling and interesting. Um, you know, you, you mentioned the great uh, Chicago defense. That's really, really strong on the back end with some good pass r- rushers up front as well. Um, and they've, you know, last week they faced Indianapolis, who has one of the best offensive lines in all of football right now. On the other side, though, the Chicago Bears just have a terrible, have a terrible offensive line themselves. Yeah. So it's it's been really hard for uh, Caleb Williams to get anything going. He's playing in a very, very uh, complex Shane Waldron offense. We were talking about Cliff Kingsbury before. His his offense seems to be working just fine in Washington with a rookie quarterback. Um, and he, he's, I mean, if he's, he's got the most simplistic NFL offenses we've seen, you know, we'll see how Jaden Daniels does in week, you know, 14 on and, and see yeah. if the league catches on or not. Um, but as of right now, Caleb Williams has not looked, uh, like the world beater that we saw even in the preseason where, you know, he's running around chucking passes into the back of the end zone, scoring touchdowns. And, um, but you know, on the you know the 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 this will be the best defense the Rams have faced, um, and probably the worst offensive line. So the there's there's just so many good versus bad. You know, yeah. you know the guy's got a good reach, but he's got no uppercut. You know, it, it's really interesting. It's fascinating. Yeah. Well, yeah, and it's a hard game to really kind of pinpoint or or just because Chicago is so both these teams. I mean, it's been such a mixed bag um, in terms of what they're good at, what they're not, what their identity is. I think Chicago, we know they're a defense first team led by Matt Eberflus. The offense, we don't, we haven't seen an identity yet. It, like you mentioned, no running game to speak of, even with the talent they have, obviously some of that's with the offensive line. And in the passing game, it's just been so all over the place. Like there were some drives last week against Indy that looked really good. And Caleb had found a connection with Rome and got the, got the end zone there and they looked good. But then other drives that just looked absolutely miserable. Like, like, oh man, this is, this, is this an NFL offense? So, um, not you gotta, to get on you my, say it like Mel Kuyper though. Romo, Romo Dunze. Dunze. <laughs> Romo Dunze. Oh, that drove us crazy all draft in April. <laughs> not to get on my soapbox here, but it's, it's absolutely shocking to me that, and Shane Waldron comes from the McVeigh tree, right? He was here in, in LA for a bit and then obviously went up to Seattle and then now is over in Chicago. So I think he is a good offensive mind, but it is just shocking that the bears did not heavily, not even just pursue, just did not let it not happen to make cliff Kingsbury their offensive coordinator, because not only does he have NFL pedigree, like, yeah, it failed in Arizona, but he was an NFL coach. He's not some just scrub or some like random college quality control assistant. Uh, he has NFL pedigree. 
He's had success as an offensive mind. He's always been called an offensive mind. And then being two years at SC with, or one year at SC with Caleb Williams, like they had a phenomenal relationship. Like maybe the public doesn't know that as much, but anyone that follows SC or certainly covers SC, like they were really close. And Caleb attributes a lot of his success to having Cliff Kingsbury in those meeting rooms and in, on the practice field and what they were able to do together. And so, I mean, I don't think we'd see the same struggles we're seeing from him had they made it more seamless for him and brought in, you know, I'm not making excuses. He's the number one overall pick, highest paid, can't miss prospect, everyone said, supposed to be generational. And I think he'll figure it out. Um, I don't think, you know, three games in, passing judgment is that. But you give him pieces in terms of on the field, but then you give him a playbook that is not conducive to what he's great at. And on top of that, a bad offensive line. But to me, again, I'll get off my soapbox now, but the Bears fundamentally messed up by not saying like, yeah, let's go get his OC. Let's go get us an OC that knows him on and off the field and can literally simulate the playbook that made him so great in college. Like it's crazy to me. Yeah. And, and another crazy thing is I'll hop up onto my uh, soapboxes uh, with that offensive line. That's just playing terribly. Um, you know, you ask your quarterback to throw 52 times against the Indianapolis Colts. I mean, yeah. You know, it's the same soapbox I get on about McVeigh in those in the first two weeks. It's like, where's the running game? Where's this? Where's this dynamic? Uh, you know, gap scheme running game. Um, and right, right now, I, I don't. I mean, the Chicago Bears' leading rusher is um, is DeAndre Rashawn Swift. Johnson? Oh, Swift. Yeah, Deion, De, Yeah. Well, Rashawn Johnson's about thirty yard, thirty eight yards behind Swift. So he's got sixty eight yards. Caleb Williams is their next top rusher with sixty seven. <laughs> Yeah. So, you know, they're, they're not running the ball. And what we've seen against the, the Rams defense is you can run the ball. Now the 49ers had trouble because they don't have CMC. They have one guy that's played one good game um, on the ground and, and nobody else. And, and if, if you're not going to be running the ball, the ball against this, this Rams team and asking Caleb Williams to continue to push the ball down the field, I think that moves in, in, in the Rams favor. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. I mean, still, I think the weakness of this defense is that run defense and they, they played better as you, as you alluded to, um, last week, but we're still giving up over four yards, um, per carry average. When you look at what Jordan Mason did, I think 19 for like 80, um, I'm not counting Brock Purdy's 10 rushes, which were mostly scramble drills. Um, but you know, 19 for 80, that's, that's still your, if they would have ran the ball more than just those 19 times, um, maybe, maybe would have broke one or, or had a little bit more success. So if the bears commit to that, that's the thing they have to watch. And can these linebackers, I think that of the defense so far, that that clearly to me has been the weakest part is, is Troy reader and Christian Roseboom um, have done some good things. I think there was a, a stop that Troy reader had last week, um, plugging a hole and just a, a massive hit that he had right in the middle of the line. That was great. But then there's other plays where they're, they're on missed assignments, missed tackles or whatever. So it's just the consistency of that linebacker room at the second level. And so if the bears exploit that, that's where the Rams can run into trouble. Um, but if they're able to bottle that up early, it's, it's just a, I think it's just a coaching thing. Like it's college pro, whatever coach it is. It's like if the run game gets bottled up early, forget about it. Everyone stops running. Kyle Shanahan stops running. Sean McVay stops running. Shane Waldron stops running. Everyone. Lincoln Riley stops running. If the yeah. running game is bottled up within the first quarter, that's the, that's all the Rams need to do because then they're basically going to – the Bears are going to have Caleb Williams throw the ball 40, 50 times again, which he can do some magic, but he's also going to make mis some mistakes and force some things. And the Rams secondary can probably capitalize on that. So that's that's the game plan for me. Bottle up the run early. Let your yeah. offense go to work. I mean, you ask uh, Bill Belichick, you got to what to do with the running game. You 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 stop the running game so you earn the privilege of rushing the passer. That's and he I don't know you've heard of him I suppose Bill Belichick decent uh, football mind decent defensive thinker. Um, and on the <laughs> other side, maybe you were getting to this, but that's where the Rams. We'll say it every week, but that's where they have to run the football. Cause as great as this, and you said it pre-show, so I'll steal your thunder here. As great as this bears defense is their run defense has been susceptible, susceptible to big plays. Jonathan um, Taylor last week, over a hundred yards on 23 carries. Um, 
I think he averaged 4.8 yards per carry, had two touchdowns on the ground. So this is where the Rams need to do the same formula. And again, I don't know if I love Kyron running it 24, 25 times by himself, but they got to get 24, 30 carries total. Maybe we'll see Blake Corum finally, but even if it's just Ronnie Rivers, that's fine. Um, but I'll toss to you because maybe we're getting to that. But that's the Rams have to, if we're saying bottle up the run on defense, they got to run the football on offense. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, what? Uh, what's interesting about, you know, what we saw last week anyway, was they kind of became predictable, but the 49ers couldn't stop them. Now, this Bears defense is better than the 49ers defense. The 49ers defense isn't what it used to be. That used to be a who's who of, you know, defensive linemen. Now it's Joey Bosa and the Bosa Ets. You know, it's, <laughs> you know, there, there's not a lot of, uh, there's not a lot of heat there. Um, yeah. This defensive line's a bit different, but what they were doing in that game, 17 of the of his 24 carries went to the right side. Who's over there? Rob Havenstein, Kevin Dotson, and Bo Limmer, who's doing a fantastic job on that side. Um, you know, that's, that's where they're running it. 17 out of 24. Um, so yeah. as long as, as long as they can kind of said that in the pre-show, remember, <laughs> did I, we said that in the pre-show, like if they're going to run the ball, they need to run to their strong side. <laughs> oh <laughs> With, yeah. yeah. Don't go to the left where there's a, uh, you know, weakness. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, and I, I, then I think, um, you know, I think that that allows Matthew Stafford to, you know, do what he does. And we saw what he can do without Puka Nakua and Cooper Cup. Yeah, which which leads me to, I mean, we've been pretty, I don't think hard is the right word, definitely critical, but shout out Tutu Atwell. I mean, okay, he looks great, I thought, in that yeah. in last week's game. Do we see a repeat against the Bears? I mean, the Bears have a really good secondary. When you look at their secondary, um, and obviously the Rams will not be without their top two weapons, uh, but does Tutu Atwell able to replicate? What he did last week? What did he? What did he? Fi- he finished with only four catches, but ninety three yards, twenty three point two yard average on the reception. And he's clutch, you know. Have a, have he got that crazy, crazy, crazy ball. Yeah, you know, like I was saying, like the twelve personnel thing. If they stick with that, they're going to look a, a bit better because everything they had, pretty much everything they had practiced leading up to the those first two games is eleven personnel. It's Sean McVay stuff. They all of a sudden switch it up, and you saw you saw last week there were those those receivers were having a hard time uh, understanding exactly where they're supposed to be just because the off- offensive scheme and, and two, two Atwell was susceptible of that as well. But they're going to, they're going to have a, they're going to have more chemistry. They're going to have more timing things figured out. So um, I'm not betting on two, two Atwell though. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. It's not even not yet. Do two and games. Yeah, in a row. Apparently just good against the Niners. Cause in week 18 last year with, you know, Carson Wentz at the helm, I think he had his, his lone touchdown also or not lone oh. touchdown, but he had a touchdown last year against the Niners. Um, so, but I do want to see, I would love to see a little more Tyler Johnson. Um, you know, only 16 completions for Stafford in last week's game. Like we said, he only threw the ball a total of 25 times. So still efficient 16 to 25, but so it wasn't like they threw it 30 times or, or had 30 completions or 20 plus completions. So, so really Tucci led the team with four Jordan Winnington had three wow. Kobe Parkinson and Tyler Johnson, both had three receptions to Marcus Robinson, only one. Um, so I would like to see that again, because that means they're running the football, but we know they're probably going to pass a little bit more than that. Um, and so I would like to see Tyler Johnson, maybe a little bit more involved, uh, you know, but I, it's good to see compared to years past or compared to just games past Stafford is spreading the ball around and not just keying in on one guy. So that was nice to see last week. We'll see if that continues this week. Now, when you're looking at that secondary, you know, Kevin Byard, great safety, Jalen Johnson, you could probably argue best corner in football, certainly top five Jalen Jones also really, really good. So it's like, who do you want to really key in on to go after? I think Kyler Gordon in the slot, you know, if they're, if they want to get two two or even Jordan Whittington in the slot, I think that all those guys can kind of play in the slot. Um, but that might be their best bet versus going in some of those, those great corners on the outside that the bears have. Yeah, no, it's a, uh... yeah, I think, you know, I'd love to see a great uh, Jordan Whittington game. I'm definitely rooting for that guy. But it, you know, it's you know, Stafford has the way of finding finding his guy, and um, you know, he he spread it around, uh, which is something that uh, we you know we've kind of asked for. You know, 
Puka Nakua or Cooper Cup, but when they're both out, you know, you just got to find, you got to find the guy that's kind of having the hot hand, kind of how the, you know, the running game sometimes works where a guy just kind of has, has it out for a team and, and, and gets angry and, and, and blows the game up. And, you know, it's just, it's gotta be another, it's gotta be another McVeigh well-called game and, and uh, using, using the, the passing game as kind of a scalpel rather than using it as a hammer. Um, and I like that. You know, I think I got some good ones today. Yeah, you do. <laughs> you do. You've been reading or something. It took a week off, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Fresh minds. Um, yeah, I. Uh, that's yeah. I, I think that um, you know Stafford can has shown several weeks in a row that he can put this team on the back, and as long as he's got enough time, and the defense is a bit on their heels. But this is the like I, I keep going back to this. This is the best defense they've faced so far. Yeah. Yeah, it will. And it, it, the offense hasn't exactly exploded, um, which obviously they're so banged up, so you can't expect them. So, um, yeah, it's got to be a heavy dose of the run game. Take that pressure off Stafford, because when you do, when he when he's needed, then he's, he's delivered. Um, and he delivered, obviously, last week and, and whatnot. So I think that's a, it's just, that's the big thing. Stop the run in the first quarter. I mean, all, all game, obviously, but I think if they stop in the first quarter, Chicago will go to the pass game. And then run the ball yourself 30 times, 30 rushes. Let's go, baby. That's all we want. 20, yeah. 28 to 30. Um, yeah, I mean, so I've been saying this is the best defense they're going to face. Is this the worst offense that they face so far? Probably. Well, uh, based on output so far, I would say yes. I mean, I think the Lions, really good. Niners, the Cardinals have looked good uh, the offensively. Even last week in the loss, they looked pretty good against the Lions. Um, Niners obviously banged up. They got them at a good time with without a lot of their skill players, but we know that's a good offense, especially in the run game. Uh, the Bears on paper, like going into the season, it's like, man, this offense on paper looks really good, but they've shown with the offensive line issues, with the run game issues, and with just the ups and downs of having a rookie quarterback that, yeah, I think through, through four weeks, this will be the worst offense they play. Um, high ceiling, but really low floor if they can fluster Fluster Caleb Williams, I and mean, even go back to USC. If he got flustered, he could make some some poor decisions, um, and so that's that's what they want to do. And we saw some last week, some poor throws, two picks, but he ended up finishing with three hundred and sixty yards and two touchdowns. So so did show some of that elite athleticism and, and skill set that he has. And so if they're able to get after him, they got to bring him down because we saw what Kyler Murray did. They could not bring Kyler Murray down when they got pressure on Kyler Murray. He escaped every time and found Marvin Harrison Jr. So That's what I'm worried about if they're going to get pressure on Caleb Williams, he's the exact same style of player. I don't think he's quite as shifty, not maybe not quite as quick as Kyler, but just as shifty, just as Houdini like. And so if, if we mentioned, you know, Jared verse looks fantastic. Can't have those missed tackles. Byron young got to bring him down in the backfield when you do have that opportunity. Um, because if they don't, then that's where, this bears offense can get going. Cause all you need is one miraculous Caleb Williams play. And all of a sudden you get all the momentum, the crowds in it, the team's fired up. But if you bring them down for a 15 yard loss, every time close the book game over. Yeah, no, 100%. I'm, I'm, and that's the thing I'm worried about is those explosive plays. Are, if they allow those, the, the Rams lead the league by not a small margin um, with 39 missed tackles so far. Mm. Then the, the third place team, has 29 tackles and then the 19th team is like 18th in the league so there's a huge gap between the the 10s if you if you will yeah so you know they got it they gotta they gotta and i'm 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 curious this would probably be the uh interesting challenge for tredavious white and kobe turner and quentin lake covering you know kobe durant kobe durant yeah uh, the, the Kobe Turner's there. in coverage. We got bigger issues. That's that's a real problem. <laughs> but you know, you know, Romo Dunze, Romo Dunze, Romo and, Dunze. and 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 Keenan Allen haven't really put it all together. Uh, I mean, Rome had a great great game last game, as you mentioned. So, you know, that's worst case scenario though. But I think it's I think it's be a, a tight game all the way through. I think you know it, it's going to be a bit of a slugfest. I think it's going to go back and forth a bit and. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're going to learn a lot. Yeah. Well, and like we said, Keenan Allen questionable right now. If he goes, um, I mean, th- that's an elite triage, right? With Keenan Allen, Roma Dunze, Romo Dunze, and 
um, DJ Moore. So, yeah. and Cole Komet at the tight end position. Like I, we haven't really seen all four of their weapons together fully healthy outside of a, a few plays, maybe week one. But I think Keen Allen got hurt pretty early on. I'm trying to think back when his injury occurred, but um, I mean, that's a tall task. And so that's going to really then fall on, you know, Byron Young, Jared Verse, Braden Fisk, that, uh, that whole defensive line to be able to get pressure because from what we've seen, the Bears offensive line can't stop four man, four man rushes. So if they're able to just get pressure with four, then I, I feel really good about this game, actually. Yeah, and the Rams, once again, are blitzing at one of the lowest rates in the league, and maybe 29th or 30th or somewhere in, in that range. So yeah. they're they're going to have to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. The, the blitz isn't coming, guys. It's just not coming. Unless they've been saving it for this game to all of a sudden just throw all these blitz packages at them. It's going to be like a WWE style where they, like, uh, you know, Ernest Jones comes out, uh, you know, oh. and <laughs> in a Rams like uniform. <laughs> Don't tease me like that. We miss you, Ernest. We miss you. Um, all right. Unless you got anything else to add, I think we can get to score predictions and wrap this thing up, put a bow on it. Yeah, no, let's do it. So both of us, you had the Niners winning as well, right? 23-20 was my, you you saw it as a big blowout, but that was, these predictions were before Kittle was completely ruled out and, um, and, and Debo. uh, Debo. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm fine taking the L I'd rather be wrong and have the Rams win. So that's fine. Um, but I think on the, I'm just trying to think on the season, what we are, but anyway, it doesn't matter. So going into this week, uh, I think we both feel a lot more confident just based on what um, the Rams were able to show um, in that last week's game and kind of their, their strengths, still some weaknesses, obviously, but don't feel real confident. The bears will expose those based on what we've seen. So anyway, I'll talk to you first. What is uh, what you got in this one? I'm going to go uh, pick in the under here, uh, 20 to 17. Oh, that's going to be pretty dang close to mine. I think I was going to go, I was even going to, I was going to go 17, 14. Um, I just, I feel like that's really low scoring in today's NFL. It's like so rare that that it scores that low. I mean, that would barely crack 30 points total. Um, so I think I will go, I'll go 21, 14. It went by a touchdown. Oh, nice. Okay. 21, four, nice, nice, clean, even numbers. 21, 14, three tutties. Five touchdowns all together. I love Five it. tutties. Cardi's just kicking extra points. Rest that leg up, son. Beautiful. Beautiful. That's the leg. So both of us got to win. Rams get back to two and two Ooh. before playing. It's the Packers next, right? Packers, yeah. Then a bye week. Then Packers in a bye. Ooh. So that, I mean, if they can get this win, two and two, regardless of what happens to the Packers, we'll get to that. That's down the line. But if they go into the bye two and three or three and two, I think that's a really good scenario based on the injury bug that has hit this team. Either way, three and yeah. two would be fantastic. Two and three would still not be bad. They got the whole season in front, get a little healthier, see if you get some of these guys back. So we wouldn't, I know maybe it's like, Oh, these guys have changed their tune. It's like, well, had they not pulled off that comeback and then you're one and three. And then if this bears game goes wrong, like, you know, we just got to play all the scenarios, but feel a lot better after that win. I mean, that was, it was a must win. And they got it done. Oh, well, and we saw the things we wanted to see from them. Finally, where the yeah. running game was going, um, you know, Stafford was able to move it around. The, the 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 offensive line was in a complete liability, and the defense did what they needed to do. If they continue, if they continue to do that, I'm 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 happy to continue to pick them. Um, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sit them and watch them get blown out by the Arizona Cardinals, uh, where it doesn't seem like I could stop anything and yeah. and, and not call them out for running the ball, you know, I don't know how many times they ran the ball on that, but it was less than 20, I think. Yeah. 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 Exactly. So, Hey, Sean, coach McVay, if you're watching this, you know, there's our, there's our keys to victory, make it happen. We can celebrate a victory Sunday in the evening, Tur- 10 o'clock game, early kick. Cause it's on the, um, in the Midwest in the great city of Chicago. So 10 AM kickoff at soldier field. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, Chicago and the Rams. This rivalry goes back to the Cleveland days. They've paid, played 96 times so far. Um, Ooh, the uh, Rams have won the last three, but there was that 2018 game that kind of mm. changed, kind of changed the tune of of that Rams offense. I don't know if you remember that one, but yeah. that held them to uh, what do we got here? Six like points, 15 to six or <laughs> something in that game. 15 to six that game, yeah, yeah, which that was. Uh, which Bill Belichick stole the game plan from Vic Fangio to shut him down. Yep. And then that ended up catalyst being the catalyst for why McVay hired Brandon Staley a few years later. So a lot of, a lot of things came out of that game. It was a cold, like sleety game in Chicago. 
Everyone talked about, can this Rams team, can Jared Goff play in the cold? This one will not be cold. This will probably be a beautiful Midwest fall morning. Well, I guess it's a noon kickoff their time, but but still a beautiful afternoon, I'm sure. I haven't looked at the weather, but I'm guessing like 60s and crisp. Great day for football. Football weather, as they call it. Yeah, the Rams, the Rams and USC this year both got really lucky with their potential away cold games. All those teams they play either at home or early in the season. I think the Rams have like one potential cold game. Um, I, I don't know their schedule in front of me. Jets. Might, I think the might be, but I can't remember. I don't have it in front of me. But they overall got lucky where they. It's either they get uh, at home in LA or it's like early on in the season. USC is the same way. They get. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, it's uh, Jets on uh, December twenty second. In okay, the middle so lands. Cold, cold night in New York. Um, but yeah, I think that's it. And then the USC is the same way that they, they played Michigan at Michigan last week. If that game was in November. That'd be different. They get Notre Dame at home this year, Penn State at home this year. So some, some good fortune for our LA teams in terms of cold weather. And you, play know, you know, we LA boys don't like it cold. <laughs> I love it cold. It's not to play, not to smash people and hit, hit, uh, in football pads. So well, cold, cold, cold's a little different, you know, it was 60 degrees and I was bundled up this morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. I was in my full sweats and parka with my coffee when I mean, it was 58 when I woke up. Um, yeah. anyway, thank you all for hanging out with us. Go Rams should be a great game. We will be on all day with coverage. LA If, uh, you haven't already, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. It's Rams LAFB easy to find helps us out. If you hit that like and subscribe button, all of our content Rams, USC, UCLA chargers can all be found at LAFBnetwork.com. That is skinny T. I am Ryan Dowd. Everyone have a great weekend. Talk to you all very soon. 